Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. You're watching Updates at Noon with me. I'm Jessica Lee. Former police commissioner Tan Sri J.J. Raj passed away early this morning at the age of 100 years old. The Bukit Kapong hero passed away at the Ara Damansara Medical Center at about 1.55 a.m. Inspector General of Police Datuk Sri Akrosani Abdullah Sani said the deceased body will be brought to the Nirvana Memorial Park in Shah Alam for funeral arrangements this evening. In a statement, Datuk Sri Akrosani said the retired police commissioner was hailed a hero when he headed the Tiger Squad to save the Bukit Kapong police officers from the 1950 communist attack. He was the Pago District Police Chief at the time. The height of Tan Sri Raj career was being appointed Bukit Aman Management Department Director in 1974. He retired in 1976 with the title of Police Commissioner. Datuk Sri Akrosani said the loss of Tan Sri Raj is a big loss for the force and the country. The Royal Malaysian Police expressed their condolences to his family <coughs> on his passing. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob will discuss development at the Sabah Kalimantan border with Indonesian President Joko Widodo or Jokowi during his visit to the country next week. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the discussion will also cover efforts on advancing the border area, including developing the infrastructure, among others. Sebagai, sebagai contoh, Kalabakan ada merupakan kawasan sempadan dengan Indonesia. Indonesia sudah majukan kawasan sempadan mereka. Dan kita nak supaya kawasan sempadan Sabah yang bersempadan dengan bandar baru di sebelah sana, kita majukan. Jadi kalau kita nak majukan kawasan sempadan, bagaimana infra pun mesti dimajukan. Di Kalabakan misalnya, kita perlu majukan infra. Mungkin... Uh, Bandar sempadan itu akan dijadikan sebagai bandar pelancongan untuk masyarakat daripada Kalimantan. Sana. He said the discussion will also touch on the involvement of Malaysian entrepreneurs in development projects in the border areas. Now, while addressing Sandakan community leaders in a meeting last night, the Prime Minister also gave an assurance that the federal government will focus on the development of Sabah and Sarawak in line with the 12th Malaysia Plan, or 12 MP, in efforts to ensure balanced development could be carried out. He said the federal government had never sidelined Sabah, adding that it would continue to be committed to developing the state and free it from being the poorest state in Malaysia. Saya nak maklumkan memang dari segi fokus kerajaan pembangunan, dari segi pembangunan, fokus kerajaan adalah dari segi pembangunan ini banyak tumpuan diberi kepada Sabah. Bajet 2022 misalnya, belanjawan untuk belanjawan ini. Peruntukan untuk Sabah merupakan yang tertinggi dari segi pembangunan ini iaitu sebanyak 5.2 bilion ringgit untuk pembangunan Sabah. Sewaktu saya membentangkan RMK12 saya juga menyebut bahawa 6 negeri yang akan diberikan tumpuan iaitu Sabah, Sarawak, Perlis, Kedah, Terengganu dan juga Kelantan. A total of 100 housing units under the Malaysian Armed Forces or ATM Veterans Housing Program is expected to be completed by the end of the year. ATM Veterans Affairs Department or JHEV Director General Major General Datuk Zulkarnai Ahmad said it consisted of 28 new units and 72 refurbished units involving an allocation amounting to 2.7 million ringgit. Di Sabah Sarawak kita dibuat harga di sana kos sana lebih tinggi di sana harganya 85000 ha. Baik pulih peruntukan yang telah kita sediakan adalah untuk sebiji rumah dalam 17 uh, uh, di antara 13 ke 17000 ringgit. 
Uh, tapi of course kita baik pulih ni kita hanya uh, melihat kepada struktur-struktur rumah yang besar lah. Contoh macam bumbung, pintu-pintu kalau kata lantai dia dah dimakan anak-anak kita tukar. So kos yang kita sediakan tu memadai lah untuk mem- mem- memperbaiki balik rumah mereka supaya mereka dapat apa dal- duduk dalam keadaan yang selesa dan selamat lah. Met after attending a handing over ceremony of a house key to a veteran in Kampung Mata Air in Machang, Datuk Zulkanain said the housing assistance is open to ATM veterans or their widows whose household income is below the poverty line income. He also urged all non-pensionable ATM veterans to register or update their personal information to facilitate the distribution of assistance. New posts for community kindergarten educators under the Community Development Department or KAMAS in the future will need to have a bachelor's degree in early childhood education. Rural Development Minister Dr. Sri Mazir Khalid stated that it was aimed at enhancing the professionalism of community educators and ensuring the quality of early childhood education is in line with the passage of time and the rapid pace of technology. He said currently educators under Kamas are required to have a diploma in early childhood education and should undergo a three-month early childhood education course to enable them to obtain a certificate as a community educator. Jadi uh, ini adalah satu usaha untuk penambahbaikan kepada kepada tadika sekolah tadika Kamas di luar bandar. Dan bila ada guru-guru yang ada kemahiran ini maknanya pening, ada peningkatan kualiti pembelajaran di sekolah dan uh, manfaat kepada masyarakat di kampung khususnya anak-anak kita yang berada di sekolah tadikal. Commenting on the recognition of Kamas Kindergarten as a trusted brand for preschool learning center and the gold award from Readers Digest Asia for 2020, Datuk Sri Mahathir said it proved the community's confidence in Kamas Kindergartens comparable to private kindergartens in providing early education to children in the country. The Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry or KPDNHEP has launched op menu to conduct checks at restaurants and eateries to prevent price manipulation and rigged scales. KPDNHEP Enforcement Director Azman Adam said the operation will focus on premises that prepare and serve cooked food including restaurants, eateries, food courts and seafood restaurants. In a statement, Azman said the checks would mostly be on the price tags and weighing scales used by restaurants and eateries. He said operators are reminded to always comply with the rules and regulations, especially regarding the display of prices and weighing scales to avoid facing legal action, including being charged in court or issued compounds. Stern action will be taken against traders who fail to comply with the legal provisions under the price control and anti-profiteering price marking for goods and charges for services order 2020. Traders can be fined up to 40,000 ringgit or a maximum of three years jail for offences under the Weights and Measures Act ATS 1972. Azman also reminded consumers to be careful and to choose ethical restaurants and eateries that display clear price lists and use valid scales to avoid being deceived by unethical traders. The Royal Malaysia Police or PDRM is tracking down British citizen Claire Brown alias Claire Rue Castle Brown after she failed to attend court to face a charge of defaming the Sultana of Trengganu, Sultana Nur Zahira. Bukit Aman Criminal Investigation Department Director Datuk Sri Abdul Jalil Hassan said following that, the Kuala Trunganu Magistrates Court had issued an arrest warrant against the Sarawak reporter editor on the 23rd of September. He said the case was being investigated under Section 500 of the Penal Code. Those who know or have information on this person are required to contact Classified Criminal Investigation Unit Chief Superintendent Junaina M. Kasbola or Investigating Officer of the Case, Assistant Superintendent of Police, Mama Cairo Rizwan Kirudin, at numbers as shown on the screen. 
The Trungano Civil Defense Force, or APM, has identified over 20 areas in seven districts that are at risk of floods due to the high tide phenomenon, which is expected to occur from early this month until the end of December. Its Director, Lieutenant Colonel PA Mohamed Rosman Abdullah said, among the areas are Kampung Kuala Ibai in Kuala Trikano, Kuala Besut and Kampung Pengkalan Atap in Besut, Kampung Seberang Pintasan in Dungun, Kampung Baru Kemase in Kemaman and Rusila in Marang. Based on the information from the Department of Irrigation and Drainage, the high tide phenomenon is expected to occur from the 5th to the 13th of November and 18th November to the 28th of December with waves up to 2.4 metres to 2.9 metres. Colonel Mama Rosman said the phenomenon could result in floods if they occur along with continuous heavy rains. As such, he said APM, together with other agencies such as the Fire and Rescue Department, would monitor the situation regularly to ensure all residents in the areas are always in a safe condition. Nasihat kami kepada pengunjung-pengunjung agar menjauhkan diri daripada ombak lah. Jangan berkumpul di tempat ombak yang tinggi lah sebab kita uh, tak tahu sebarang kemungkinan yang mungkin akan berlaku lah jikalau ombak itu semakin tinggi. Uh, nasib kita baik pada malam ni tak disertakan dengan angin kencang. Jadi kita tak tak nampak ombak itu terlalu tinggi lah. Tapi hakikatnya memang ada kenaikan untuk air pasang ni lah. Colonel Muhammad Rosman was met after inspecting the high tide phenomenon at Pantai Seberang Takir last night. According to the Malaysian Meteorological Department, heavy downpours are expected to occur in Kelantan, Trungganu, Pahang and Johor from November until early January 2022 due to the northeast monsoon season, which started on the 3rd of November. In our foreign segment, five killed in Brazil plane crash. International men's singles ace Li Zijia made life difficult for himself before reaching the singles semifinals in the High Low Open 2021 in Germany. Now, the world number eight took 41 minutes to beat Thailand's Kantapon Wang Charon 21 13, 22 20 in Saarbrücken, but not after being stretched to the limit in the second game. Zijia won the opening game without much fuss, but struggled in the second against a determined opponent who took a massive 16-6 lead. Zijia clawed his way back into the game to pick up 10 points in a narrow in a row and leveled the score at 16 all. Both players were then locked in a close fight, but the Malaysian managed to pull through. Zijia will now face India's Srikanth Kidambi for a place in the final. In our top story, Malaysia and Indonesia to discuss Sabah Kalimantan border issues. Tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10 p.m. on My Free View, Salur and Brita, RTM Channel 123. Before we go, we leave you with a video footage of the new world's largest cruise ship, the Wonder of the Seas, under construction for two years at the Chantiers, the Atlantic Shipyard in France. It left the port of Saint Nazaire for Marseille, where some final touches will be completed. Thanks for watching, I'm Jessica Lee.